investigations have you done this type of investigation? Uh, well, we got a letter from Jason Mathis, um, Mr. Dow. We got so many letters, I can't count them. So you did this how many times? I mean, we're talking 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times? No, not 100, less than 10. Less than 10? No. And did you access all of these databases just like you did in this particular case? No, this case was unique in that I knew the guy, Mr. Cantrell, used two aliases while testifying under oath. So it was important that we figure out what his name is, because that's the first thing we ask a witness is, what is your name? State it and spell it for the record. So that's why we accessed his rap sheets to see what his name was. You'd agree with me that, I mean, you're essentially uh, accusing Mr. Mouton of perjuring himself by saying his name is Antoine Mouton, correct? For saying that and a bunch of other stuff he testified to. But you are saying that the fact that he calls himself Antoine Mouton is perjury. Objection calls for legal conclusion. I would say oh, yes. Can answer. I would say yes, and the fact that he spells it multiple different ways also constitutes perjury. And the fact that his rap sheet shows that these were aliases and this information was only available to the prosecution team, yes. Well, you keep saying that, but I mean, you don't have any idea who had access to that criminal history, correct? San Francisco Police Department, yes, they do. Well, you don't know if the, criminal, the, the defense attorneys in this case had the NCIC. Do you, you mean in 2006? In 2006. Do you know or do you not know? I don't know that. You don't know that? No. And isn't that one of the requirements of Brady? No. If they're in possession of the information, it can't be a Brady violation, correct? Objection. Calls for legal conclusion. If they're he in, can answer. If they're in possession of the information, it can't constitute a Brady violation. I would say that's probably correct. Okay. So if they are in possession of the information, then there isn't any legal problem. Correct. Objection. I don't know about that, but he can answer. Well, why don't you say it, it's not a Brady violation in his opinion? It's not a Brady violation if they're in possession of the information. Yes. And, and again, Your Honor, this is why my I've objected. But again, another reason why Mr. DiGiacomo is defending his own alleged Brady violations. Now, do you have any idea what Mr. DeMarco did with those records? You'd with have to what ask records? Him. The records that you provided. You don't know what he did with them. You'd have to ask him. I don't know. Have you, did you have any concern about the public dissemination of those records? No, because it was Brady. So, given that it was Brady, this was information that should have been elicited at trial in an open courtroom. So, that wasn't a concern of mine. You had... No concerns then that Mr. Dow, who does podcasts, would publish these records and on the internet call out Mr. Mouton slash Cantrell about being a snitch and a liar. Objection, Did I have concerns about that? Did you have concerns? Excuse me. No, he can answer the question. Sure. Did, I mean, he gave the documents to you. We, I think the prosecutor is permitted to ask we, this stuff. Your Honor, it assumes facts, not in evidence that... Well, he's trying to ask it. Well, I'm asking if he has concerns. My concern was about disclosing the Brady as timely as I could, so that was my concern. So you didn't have any concerns about how this information would be used? Your Honor, it also well, misstates the testimony. Well, I mean, I assume that you thought Mr. DeMarco was going to use it in his professional capacity. As Brady, correct. Okay. And, Your Honor, there's no evidence that any of this alleged material went on to a podcast as being represented by Mr. DiGiacomo. Uh, there will I, be, but I can ask I questions agree. about it. I agree. I agree. You're correct. Now, June 23rd, 2021, is the first time I did a podcast for the Gangster Chronicles. And June, I mean, November the 17th, 2021, that was the second one for Gangster Chronicles on both of those podcasts. Latif didn't even know that I even existed, or I, or I should say, I didn't even know what Latif existed, especially didn't know that he was in the district attorney's office. Latif said he heard the Gangster Chronicles podcast. There was no pictures or no photos of Mouton at that time. He didn't even give me the Brady. So I'm just, I'm only saying this to show you how manipulative this diabolical bigot is. He does shit like this. He trying to flip the dates, change the dates, and 
then the whole time he's sitting in the courtroom, he pump faking and rump shaking like he gonna play a video that he got. And he never played the video. I'm on the lawyer and I'm like, hey man, let him put that video in. But at the same time, they allow this motherfucker to take that video and introduce it as evidence so that the judge can go in the back and look at it. Yeah, she went back there and she saw me grilling the whole establishment. Because that was uh, that video uh, that from from my investigation and clear understanding of it, it was the video when I was talking about getting rid of Aaron Ford and that judge and all of the, all of that establishment. Because they are all reckless. They're disrespectful. This judge, man, that bitch need to be dis... Hey, listen, man. She need to be kicked off that bitch. She need to have her license as an attorney, a, a, a judge. Everything supposed to be taken... It should be a, a fucking federal investigation right now. Not now, but right now. I'm talking about they need to go and look into this shit because it is so foul and it is layers of it. And, I, and what I'm telling you, the motherfucker got to look into that. I'm not just saying this. Wait till y'all see these videos that I have. Of the, when you watch this video, see, I'm, I'm, uh, I got so much information and so much uh, treacherous conduct from this motherfucker that I'm, this is the video. See, when you see this video and you see all the other videos and you see the, what he does and how this judge allowed him to get away with it, come on, it's other legal minds. That when you see this, you need to get this to him. I mean, the motherfucker got to really take into account and say, hey, this could be me, my family. This could be anybody that I know. And even if you don't know him, when he's conducting himself like this, he needs to be checked. Period. You heard Mr. Mouton testify, correct? Or Mr. Cantrell, I'm sorry, testify. Correct. Have you seen the affidavit he signed related to his recantation? I think I have seen it. If I represent to you that he signed that on April 20th of 2022, you can look at that. That's defense, Judge, I believe it's been marked as defense exhibit. It's well, I guess theoretically for this hearing, it's Plaintiff's Exhibit 4. Okay. That was executed on April 20th of 2022, correct, sir? That's what it says, yes. Um, were you aware, well, you were here when his father said that after hearing podcasts, he went out and talked to Mr. Mouton. That's when Mr. Mouton first changed his story. Did you hear that testimony? I don't know if he said that's when he first changed his story, but that's when he said he went and talked to him and got the info from him. In response and then to, to a podcast, do you remember that? I did say, I thought he said he heard it on the internet, but if it's a podcast, he said, then sure. And that's when he went up and then Mr. Mouton recanted. Correct? After hearing something on the internet, he said he flew from, I believe, Oakland to Las Vegas, and that's when he had a conversation with his son. You also heard him testify that his son was very susceptible to manipulation. I heard that. that. I did. As when you gave off, gave over this information, knowing Mr. Dow did podcasts, did you have any concerns that Mr. Mouton would be the subject to any sort of pressures or manipulations as it relates to his testimony? No, my concern was Brady and disclosing the Brady as timely as I could. Okay, y'all hear this fucking Wahoopi? Do you hear this Wahoopi? Now, he's talking to, he's talking about. Hey, well, he's asking my teeth. Oh, did you did you have any concern that uh, Mouton would be, you know, pressured by the, the podcasts of that Mr. Dow has access to these podcasts? Look, bitch, y'all pressured me. You the one did all this to him. So you keep talking about pressure and pressuring him. His father went to him, went to his son, and asked his son, "Hey." Did you go and lie on this man, Mac Minister? He said his son broke down for 10 minutes crying. And when I found out what was going on, I felt it was my duty to talk to him about it. I flew to Las Vegas and to ask him face to face if he lied on this guy. 
when I asked him, he just broke down crying for 10 minutes. And he, then he told me, yeah, he did lie. So I feel like it's my duty to, as that's my son. I brought him here. And nobody else is going to guide him to do the right thing. So that's what I did. I suggested that he tell the truth. How did you begin the conversation with regards to this case? I, I brought up that there's a lot of stuff on the internet about you and that you testified on somebody and at the same time you were locked up in a whole other state. Uh, the dates that you supposedly been, were having conversations with this person, so did you lie? So it sounded like to me that he relieved, he was releasing pressure. He was relieved of pressure when he came up in there because he knew that he had his dad with him and that he was confident and he came and did the right thing and told on you motherfuckers. And now you're trying to clean it up. And then this is the thing. You think it's coincidental that the Giacomo got all of these flagrant fucking violations? Whoop Lady got a thousand pages of impropriety. What part of that you motherfuckers ain't listening to? So this diabolical white boy with that bullshit? No, nah, you can't listen to that. See? He is so conniving, cutthroat, and he don't give a fuck. All he trying to do is cover this up. It ain't even in him. To, uh, to, hey, man, I'm wrong. He ain't gonna never capitulate to the right thing. He's going to always do the white thing and try to bury a motherfucker so that he can shine and look good. But listen, bitch, I done told you. The days of you admiring yourself shall soon come to an end. The Lord's on my side. You done violated in so many minutes, and the reason why I'm on the phone now and I'm addressing this to the fucking world is so that people, because the right motherfuckers go here and they're going to come down here. See? It's going to be some black and brown folks and even some good white folk that's going to be down in Clark County tripping about this shit. Because, man, you're wronger than two left feet in a snitch in the street. You're just a reckless, dishonorable motherfucking Wahoopi. You set your people back 400 years with this kind of conduct. <laughs> you so disrespectful. You playing so many games. All of these questions to this man that he really doesn't have the capacity to answer because all he did was brought the Brady that you hid. You buried it. And the Quran says, Allah knows what they conceal and what they reveal. For he knows what's before them and what will be after them. So if you got a problem, bitch, put God on the stand. 